Hi. Hello. Uh, hello, Zoom. Hello to everyone, anyone that's watching. You are here for the first Cocktails and Conversation. Yay! <laughs> I love this. Welcome. And I'm so excited. Okay, so before we get started, let me just say hi, I'm Jess I'm with the Cocker Center. Charles. I'm here with Charles. Hey. And Charles. Charles. Charles is uh Charles is helping me lead the the charge to uh, condone social drinking in in reckless form, drinking together alone with the Coffer Center. Um, we have DK, we have Daniel Kyrie here. What's Hi. up, my? How are you? Um, I'm really good. Uh, I'm very. I'm so happy that you guys asked me to you know be a part of this. I have a lot of enthusiasm around it. I love. Um, drinking and talking to people, those are two of my favorite things. So I am so honored to be here right now. That's so weird. I'm the same way. So <laughs> I've been I've been drinking at home and talking to my cat. So this works out much better. A little bit better, yeah. A little bit. Okay, so first, before we get started, started, I see that DK's mixing. So I want you to tell us, what is it? What are we, what are we drinking with you, watching you drink? Okay, so check this out. I, this is actually my first time making this for myself. Um, and it's also one of my favorite cocktails for real, for real. Um, so I just went ahead and I put some, some vodka in my little, my little mixer here and I mixed it up with some, uh, some, some olive juice. So I've got a dirty martini right here. Nice. Okay. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta finish it off, man. Put, put one of the olives in there. Like, this this right. thing you gotta have garnish. I you listen, I feel what um you're saying, okay, and I agree with you. And also they're all in this in this bottle. So we're just gonna have to wait until I make enough cocktails to drink the rest of this juice and then get the olives out. Do you see what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's a it's a it's a multi-step thing. First the juice, then the olives. Then the olives. <laughs> I see. Process. I well, see. that's what I get for trying to be fancy, right? I tried it. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, so was, I'm glad that you say trying to be fancy because Charles and I had this conversation before we went live because he was showing me, Charles was doing what you're doing, which was mixing it up. And that, and the moment that, Charles, what did you show me that I realized what, where, where the distinction was between our preparation? It, it could have been, it could have been one or two. Uh, so, because I got, I got two quite, quite bougie things over here. Um, bougie. One, <laughs> I use to mix things up. It's a, it's a it's a bougie cheat though because this is actually for coffee. Okay, that's bougie too. But um, <laughs> my my beaker that I'm in, so that could have been it. And this is really where it gets fancy. Uh, I love cognac, and so this is my cognac Ooh. glass. Okay, okay. Little, Come on, decanter or whatever. A decanter. Whatever nice. it is. I don't even know what it is. Older, you know. I get you know what they say. You know when at home. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that, but that, that wasn't I, no, that wasn't what got me. That was not the those were not the bougie things that got me. It was the third thing. What was the third? Your plate. Oh, You're, oh <laughs> you God! Forgot what is it? I did. I did. Is this some cheese and charcuterie? Yo, this, cheese and charcuterie is, for the win. At home, this is like the the uh, the uh, uh, Trader Joe's salami with. Uh, the yeah. Trader Joe's cheese, you know, some Ritz crackers. See, he's, DK, he's got the olives right there in the middle, see? Oh, you guys, no, wait, you didn't see this. I'm sorry to, to steal your thunder, Charles, but you guys didn't see this, but I got I got some olives in there. Look at hey. that. I Are made it happen, it? and I couldn't have done it without inspiration from Charles, so thank you. Also, no is, that beaker like, is that beaker, like, from a French press? It's from a pour-over. Oh, okay. All right, nice. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I use it. Look, look, bougie going wrong. So I pour my French press in, I mean, my, my, my pour over in when I'm making two cups of coffee. Uh, okay. Like a, you know, good little, little mixer, good little, good little right. container. Okay. But it is for a French press. Y'all fancy over there. there. Okay. Okay, so y'all is just him because it was when he showed me his that I showed him that what I have is the Wicked Grove Cider from the Aldi. Nice. And a bowl of tortilla chips in a kid's plastic bowl. 
Well, listen, I'm proud of you. And I love that because, listen, ciders are underrated. Okay, people don't appreciate them. So thank I you agree. so much for repping them for the rest of the world to see. Okay, that's important. I was actually excited about it because the, there was the, where's my camera? It's the bonus feature of elderflower, which I didn't know what that was going to be like. And it's really just like flowery cider. But, but it was exciting because I didn't know for the minute. Like, what do you think an elderflower cider is going to be like? There, is it knows? There was, uh, and, and DK, this might, you know, I don't know if you, if you do gin. Uh, that's what I was going to say. But okay, there's the elderflower, I right. only found it once, elderflower Hendrix gin. Ooh. If you can ooh. find it, ooh, it is amazing. It has <laughs> something like this little purple bottle, and it has like this, like you were saying, like a little floral note to it. So it's not just like, this is gin, because that's pretty much what it tastes like gin. Right, um, right. That had a nice taste to it. I think I do, I do gin, speaking of getting fancy, like, I feel like I'll do a gin martini when I want it feel fancy because, like, it has, like, more, yeah, more of that herbal, like, flavor to it. But mostly I just like to do, I just, I like to do vodka, dirty vodka martinis because at that point you, you're only really tasting the olive juice. Um, and I like that about it. I also like, I like when you, like, do, like, a little bit of vermouth in there and you kind of swirl around and you pour that shit it out do you understand i don't want vermouth in my dirty martini not for real okay i want like essence of vermouth like like a Lacroix beverage you see what i'm saying it hints at it, it like whispers vermouth in your ear as you're drinking it but you don't taste it. that's what i want that's how i like it see i appreciate i appreciate that you're oh i, I think i think that martinis are one of those things that i expected to grow on me like other things and mm -hmm. i've just never i've never gotten into like when people get excited about like um, like Bloody Mary bars and things like that, I'm not a savory drink person. Like I just, it's never been something. I appreciate people that appreciate it, but it's never been something that I've grown a palate for, and I don't know why. I thought it would be something that I'd like grow up to like, and I just, I don't. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, I found my way. I'm glad I have permission to not like it as you mix your drink. Like I'm glad I have your <laughs> sign off on not liking martinis. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to each uh, to each their own. And also, like, yeah, you're right. Some things join you, some things don't. Like sushi or blue cheese. You just, you know, it's 50-50 it's on that kind of stuff. So, so sushi and blue cheese, are those things that you like or do not like? I love sushi and I love blue cheese. <laughs> I, well, I think... Here's, they're okay, just, they're so, just theoretical things that someone might not like, not you particularly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've encountered people who like, you know, so there's, you're, you're either, uh, you're in one camp or the other, right? I mean, like, it's like, are you a, a ranch dressing person or a blue cheese dressing person? I'm a blue cheese dressing person, but there are people who don't like that because they don't like blue cheese. And I get it, I understand. But I feel like I have a little more versatility on like the more savory side of things because I don't have a sweet tooth like at all. So. See, that's, like okay, so that's more. my problem then. Cause that, yeah. that is my heightened tooth right there. Like I have a giant ass bag of Swedish fish in the other room right now. Like it's like a five pound, like, like, and, and furthermore, it wasn't even, I bought that before. I bought this kind of Swedish fish before, but it was sent to me by a friend at the beginning of all of this. And she called it like pandemic survival material because she knows me that well. So I was like, I see, that. so when that's your brand, that's a problem. So my sweet tooth is the prominent tooth, which I think maybe that's the distinction. Yours is the savory tooth. Yeah, exactly. I like I just like the savory and the salty stuff. So I feel like if it's on that side of things, I'll like explore like I don't even like I hate chocolate. You know what I mean? Like I'm that kind of person. Yeah. How, how did I not know this? I mean I, I didn't know I didn't know like the the, 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 the the sweet and savory thing either, but like I'm I thought I was one of the only people in the world that's just like I don't really do the chocolate thing, you know. I'll, I'll take a, a little bite here and there, but sweet tooth, nah, it's not. It's not me, especially not when it comes to chocolate. I don't. I don't like the. T I don't even like the smell of chocolate though. Like I'm. I'm that. Like if I smell, you know how? Oh, I for I forget like what part of the city it is, but you know like that part of the city, like especially in the summer, and the chocolate factory is kind of like going. And you can smell the chocolate in the air. Blubber. Right. Yes. What is it? It's Blommer, right? B L O M M E R. Yes. If anybody knows the correct spelling, feel free to comment. But yes, Blommer. Blommer yes. Chocolate Factory. 
Yes. And like, I used to ride my bike through that area all the time because I used to live in Pilsen and I like bike up and go to like Second City or go to like, I don't know, an audition or whatever. And I would like bike through that. And like every time it like the smell would like make me gag almost. So I got to the point where like in school, like, okay, so here's what happened. Like I essentially told people that I was allergic to chocolate for a while because I didn't want to explain myself because inevitably every time I told someone I didn't like chocolate they'd be like how could you not like chocolate blah blah blah. and then honestly it led to a lot of microaggressions when I was in college with white people being like you don't like chocolate but you are chocolate and then I'd be like okay so that's problematic I don't like it stupid so I literally got I'm that's what I'm saying so I literally got to a point where I was just like I'm allergic and then people be like oh I'm so sorry for you and then move the fuck on basically but yeah I hate chocolate that's me welcome to my world (laughs) See, and I, I would think that chocolate's the great unifier. Like, I figure everyone likes <laughs> just a piece of chocolate. Apparently not. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really hoping that, like, when we have kids and all of that, right, that, like, this whole gluten-free movement is going to continue because I feel like when my kids, you know, are the, the people who are younger right now, I feel like they're not going to have the same problem that you had, that I had, DK, of just being like, I can't tell people that I don't like chocolate because I'm going to get judged. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, now people are going to be like, you don't like chocolate? Oh, I completely understand. You know, totally. I, can't, I can't have bread or-, <laughs> <laughs> or peanuts or whatever. It's about compassion and it's about empathy. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their food preferences and we should just leave people the hell alone is how I feel. Thank hey, you so much for the conversation. Yeah, okay, you guys. I'm, I'm glad we gave you this platform. Listen, Cheers. okay. Cheers. Cheers. Empathy around food choices and drink choices and being Amen. you know nice and stay at home bougie with our drinks uh cheers yes. to the thank you for joining us uh thank you for everybody else who is tuning in and joining us uh cheers cheers y'all cheers cheers y'all and we have we have shannon go back on facebook agreeing with you to dirty uh dirty vodka martinis got a got to vote for yes so you're not you're not alone in your dirty style vodka martini and this is, and listen, this is really why I agreed to, um, to do this experiment with you all, is I just, I really wanted a, a platform uh, where I could spew my own propaganda, okay? I'm anti-chocolate, and I am pro-dirty vodka martinis, okay? Nobody crossed me on this one, all right? I appreciate these campaign promises right here. Yeah, these are good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, let me, so, uh, I want to, I want to take that, man. I want to take that, that idea of like getting on and spreading propaganda, not for real, for real, but like, right. like what, what is the, the, the one thing, man, um, that's been keeping you like thinking, like preoccupied, right? Because when everything is going, when industry is up, I mean, you, congratulations, you know, on here. You know, I've told you this t- a ton in person, too. Congratulations on everything that's happening for you right now, you know, with fire and your career. Yeah, thank you. Like, big ups. Um, thank you, bro. Now that all of that's kind of at a, at a standstill, what's the one thing that's been keeping you thinking, like, you know, keeping your mind going uh, during this time that we've been in, in quarantine? Uh, I th- well for me okay so quarantine y'all what a weird t- I think okay so you know what I think about I think about you know how like you'll see like um I there are two that I've seen in the last like a uh, couple plays I'm talking about plays this is where uh, the vodka is starting to hit me a little bit but I'll get there I promise so <laughs> you know how you like go and you see a play and it's like a post-apocalyptic play or whatever and like it's like a thing where people are like trapped in like a space and like whatever whatever like the children at Stephen Wolf or like there was another play that I believe Jackalope put on maybe in the last two years that was kind of like that too and um I've just been like my imagination has been like sparked and like really going like in terms of who'd have thought that it would look like this like I was talking to Molly Brennan the other day, uh, we were chit-chatting and she was basically like, I mean, as a joke, but also not a joke. She was just basically like, I never thought that the end of the world would be so um, boring. And I had to laugh at that because it's like, we were both discussing like, there's nothing, absolutely nothing boring about what's going on, like um, on the macro level of things. And yet what we have to contend with day in and day out is like, 
sort of continuing honoring these like mundane day to day moment by moment things that we just have that we like as human beings we just like have to do and it's so interesting to exist almost outside of the context of uh productivity in a certain in a, in a way or the pressure to produce right i feel like in the last few weeks especially anything that i that has like sparked my creativity or that has like made me move and produce and want to create has been almost entirely like self-started right so there hasn't been really an external pressure so much to like keep going, keep hustling, keep juggling so many things in the air at once, which is like the Chicago way. You know, um, being born and raised here, it's the only way that I've, that I've ever known. I, like I've been having like, luckily for me, I'm quarantined with like three other um, people. We've been quarantined together from the beginning, my roommate, my partner, and uh, my roommate's partner, Adam. And so it's been a lot of really wonderful late night conversations about like, philosophy and just whatever else and i think the thing that's keeping me curious is just like humanity in general there's so many questions i have about like about like what's happening around us and um i think i see i see hope and i see opportunity in in the midst of the kind of like stickier uh like hard shit things that we're having to go through together because we're going through it together makes me have like a, a, a sort of a modicum of hope or something to look forward to. Um, but yeah, just like humanity, human nature, and like the things that I hold dear and that I feel like uh, are the things that I believe in and then seeing people like take to the streets who I have a, a negative opinion of, people who take to the streets who are like protesting, you know, the shelter in place order and yet that's their right. And so it's interesting to like be in this in this place where I'm engaging with curiosity around what about, around their worldview versus my own, um, like I believe in science, for instance. <laughs> but and, and I think and I think you bring up a good point because I've I've had that same kind of existential debate too, which is like how do you ground yourself in your truth and fortify it with research when you have people that you respect and love and you still want to you want to journey through this in a position of respect and love and keep and maintain that relationship in spite of clashing of viewpoints because mm. i i've actually like seen some people i know on different ends of the spectrum where there are some people that are modestly militant about their right to assemble or their right like you can't take away my rights you know what i mean and it's one of those things where, like well i mean yes sure true but also when your rights are being asked to be restricted for your benefit at what right. point, like like it's right. just that duality well, yeah, you have the right to play, but either. is that what is that benefit. i said it, and it's not just it's not just for your benefit i think i think right. what I, I think um uh what's what's interesting to me is that there's a sense of selfishness that i feel like i uh that i like view and like these people who are sort of like it's my right to blah 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 and it's because it's about me, 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 I, 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 self, 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 convenience, right? The, the Western lie of convenience. And once that thing is threatened, once that like ideal of like, I can get anything I want within my reach. I mean, there are obviously there are privileges that I think are inherent in this example. And yet we are where we are. But like this thing of like, I can get what I want when I want it. And all of a sudden I can't like, you know, the real world crashes down and says, actually, you need to like stay put, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then this sort of like this selfish thing that is actually conditioning, it's American conditioning, is like sort of coming, like rising up and rearing its head. And it completely detracts from what the larger picture is, which is community. You know, it says, it says, well, my rights, my me, 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 me. And it's not thinking about, you know, the 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 community and and i think like this entire situation is asking us to think about who we are not as individuals necessarily but who who we are slash who we want to be as like a people a community a society a, a world yeah. um so yeah i don't know like my i think like it's such an intensely introspective time right now and that's yeah. what's keeping me thinking is just human behavior have you seen i can't remember if it's i don't i don't remember what the the it, what news source it was 
and maybe you guys have seen it, but there was something that was like um, talking about like, this is like the time for you to pause. And then when this is all done, there's going to be a lot of things that offer the solution to your discomfort and be cautious to let them in. Um, because you have, you have the position now to determine to your, for yourself, what is worth letting back in after this, like, especially like, there's so many things that advertise to be the solution to your problem. That's what advertising is. You have a problem, I can solve it. But like the discomfort you're experiencing right now isn't necessarily something to immediately resolve. And like the things that you glean from this and the benefits that you earn from this, whether it's like shared time with the people in your space and like increased sense of community, you know, or like you've been saying all this time I need to slow down. Well, now you've slowed down. What did you need to slow down for? You know, what sense of clarity did you get about what you need for your individual human experience to enhance a shared experience and then coming out of this, like don't alleviate your discomfort, you know, be cautious what you let back in because you were given this gift. Like it's a situation that you didn't ask for, but it's a situation you're in, which can be a gift right. and having this <laughs> momentary pause to actually ascertain for yourself, what do I need moving ahead? Right. Out of right. this? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally just picked up, I don't know if y'all have heard about these things. Uh, bullet journals uh picked up a bullet journal because it's, it? like, uh, it's like it's, it's a journal that has nothing but dots in it and you have oh. to like fill it in as you go but that same concept that you all are just talking about right where dk you're saying like the stuff that you're thinking about and the stuff that that's driving you right now is is self-started you know and like mm -hmm. you know, we're in quarantine and and or you know this time and and you know, whatever we decide to give time is what we will give time to, uh, you know, and the habits that we decide to build are the habits that will persist, you know, so that's, that's dope. What, DK, how are you as an actor staying, staying creative during this time? Oh, child, listen, Charles, don't ask me that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. So to answer that, I'm going to go back just a bit um, because, uh, Jess, you said something that, that really struck me and I think leads directly into, Charles, what you're asking. And it's like this idea of, Jess, you said, like, this, this pause or this break isn't something that we, like, ask for and so we have to make do with, you know, the situation. And I, I am curious and want to challenge and also would just posit that in a lot of ways, I think actually we have asked, not for a pandemic, of course, but a lot of us have asked for space and have asked for time and have asked for a moment to slow down and appreciate and practice, you know, uh, uh, presence and all of that kind of stuff. And I have this, I have this theory that I'm meditating on right now that is, it's, it's it's essentially says that like god or the universe or or whatever larger power entity collective consciousness that you pray to or ask things of um so often we 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 ask things of the universe okay and the key i think to receiving it is to make space for it right so we ask for things and a lot of times we don't make space to receive it instead it's like I might ask for some space or some time or a goddamn vacation, okay? Because I haven't had it in like two plus years. I might, I might ask for it, and but my hustle-minded self, the, 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 the part of me that has been conditioned by society that says, work, 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 hustle, 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 I can't fall behind, I need momentum, whatever that is, says I need to keep booking and finding jobs and doing the whole thing. And so now all of a sudden I find myself in a position where I literally can't do anything, right? And a part of that is I feel like it's just like this, this moment of like a sacred pause, okay? That the universe has said, be still, okay? And what can we learn instead of <clears throat> production, hustle, movement, what can we learn from stillness, right? Mm. And so Charles, to answer your question about like me, like as an actor, I, so, so many of the things that I have interest in just sort of overlap and like bleed into one another to the point where I feel uh, it feels more um, apt, more accurate to describe myself like as an artist, again, whatever the hell that means. Um, because like, I, I love writing and I love singing and I love, you know, film and I love uh, directing and producing even and just facilitating um, 
uh, space and platform and opportunity for other voices. And so all of it kind of like bleeds together. But specifically as an actor, I've leaned into space, man. I've leaned into stillness. I There was a, a period of time for about two weeks where I was getting um, some like self tapes or whatever requests. And I literally just had a moment where I was like, no. I was like, I can't, for me personally, I'm not saying this is right for everyone, but for me personally, I said, I said, no. I was like, there's this thing, there's this huge thing, this this turning point, this this global turning point that's occurring. It's a turning point in history. Like this is going to be, you know what I'm saying, in the history books or I guess the history clouds, I don't know, of the future, okay? Um, and there's just, in this moment, there's a need for me to take it in. I can't, you know, it, there's, I, for me to just keep moving, I mean, I have sort of picked up the pace again, like this week, but like I needed a period of, of rest and not just rest, but intentional rest. But to isn't like, it interesting? Back into my, oh, go ahead. Isn't it interesting though, that sometimes it, it's almost like we need somebody else to give us permission to stop? Absolutely. Like Absolutely. I had somebody else just ask me, like had an audition request come up and was trying to figure out the reader thing. And was like, what if I, what if I'm not in headspace to do this right now? Right. I'm like, let's talk about that. Cause that's super real. And just like, you know, you can't, if, if the world were, if the seas were level right now and you go into an audition in a fear-based space because you have anxiety and desire and whatever, you know, you're not going to produce anyway you're coming at it out of fear whether it's fear of the people in the room or fear of missing that opportunity or fear of what you won't get or what you need to impress you're coming at it with fear and so right now if you're coming at these self-tapes with the fear of the opportunity you're going to lose out on because of the fear of the situation it's not worth its weight in anything anyway and it's not serving you so why do you need somebody else to give you consent to stop right like you right. can stop the world has stopped us you can stop and give yourself permission to stop because continuing to go doesn't serve. Like, and it's interesting that we need that external permission sometimes. And I'm, I, I applaud is the moment you said, like say no to the self tape, because it's like to find, to find the consent within yourself to have the, the like contract within yourself that like, I am, I am contracted to take care of myself first. So I consent and I'm under a contract with myself to navigate oh, right. yes. through like, but I don't think a lot of people can trust that that's okay. You know, like, I, what like do you think to get there? It's like, this is like something that I, so I, the first couple of weeks of this thing, I had, pan, I had panic attacks. I had night terrors. I had sleep paralysis for the first seven years. Like all kinds of shit was just my emotional well-being, my, my, my mental, my psyche, and, and my physical were all just like under attack from the constant anxiety, the stress, watching the numbers and the news go up and up and up and having members of my family who are healthcare workers or on the front lines, like just all kinds of, you know, the, the, the family texts, the friend group messages, like all of it, you know, it just, and I got to this place where I was talking to my partner about this and I was just like, here's the, here's the tea, here's the situation, okay? We're on a fucking plane, okay? And there is some rocky turbulence at the moment. We may be going down, who's to say? But you cannot, you cannot help your community. You cannot help the person next to you. You cannot, you can't do anything until you put your mask on first. Mm. You have to take care of yourself first. And once you do that, then you can reach out, then you can check in, then you can talk to, support, do the thing, you know, all of that like lovely stuff, but you have to start here. And so I felt a need to like get in touch with my own shit, my own bullshit. And it's not, and I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I've had so much time with myself and I am utterly uncomfortable. Okay. But it's so necessary. So, but you know, you know yourself better too from that. You yes, know, I do. You, you've had to yes, sit in that. Yes, I do. <laughs> for better or worse what yes i do for you man like what what is what is what is your your vest what is your your oxygen mask you know like how what have you been doing to self-care during this time um 
And uh, I fully acknowledge that this might look different for other people. And I encourage whoever is watching and receiving a word from this to just investigate what works best for you, for your spirit, and what sits right for you. Um, because none of us are alike. As alike as we are, none of us are the same. Okay, so find your own mechanisms, your own toolkit to deal with the current situation. But for me, it's been a mix of being active, of maintaining physical well-being and it's been uh on the other side of that like a balancing act of like rest of like hey you know what daniel you don't have anywhere to go today so you can sleep in until noon you know what i'm saying and like having those like negotiations with myself of like and honestly taking it day by day is the most important thing okay because like i have been in like a real upward swing in the last week or so of like really reestablishing like a routine like i wake up and i do some stretching and i do a little bit of exercise and i might go for a walk or i might not and then i meditate meditating has been the most important part to me um because there's so like i have generalized anxiety disorder and so there's so much like happening in here that those moments of stillness like i feel like i get i uh, I shied away from meditation so much because like, I don't really want to spend that much time inside my own head, I'm being honest. <laughs> but what it does is it's a kind of, it's a self-care rooted in discipline and discipline itself is an active self-care. I encourage people to like view it that way. And the discipline of sitting with my thoughts has been so helpful in breaking down, you know, my anxiety, my discomfort, my depression, um and then writing every day journaling um and yeah and just letting myself have space and allowance to do absolutely nothing when i need to do absolutely nothing on the flip side so yeah it's like that like that yeah. just, just like how about that. you what about you guys what are you guys doing charles i'll be back hold on give me one second he's, he's oh. gonna do it he's gonna do it i know what he's gonna do what's he gonna do ten dollars Oh, ten dollars says he brings puppies to the party right now. Ten dollars. I don't want to talk $10. about ten dollars. If there's dogs on screen in less than thirty seconds, you owe me a ten spot. Just wait, and I will. Even though I've even though I've seen these puppies, give me your Venmo. Give me your Venmo right I will, now. We, we will I get off this call. Feeling. Puppies show up right now, and you will pay me ten dollars. <laughs> it will offset the cost of my cheap cider. Yes, come on. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, I can't. I'm no. I can't. No, I can't. Wait. wait. Have you not? <gasps> oh, I can't with this. I can't with this. This wow. is only. Stop it. They're so cute. There's two. Oh, more. Nothing is bad when you have puppies. There's there's five of them. There's five. One. I woke them up. Oh, she's not happy right now. Do you hear that? What's the name of the one that's talking? Uh, that's Claire. Okay. No. Oh. Oh. I didn't oh get to God. say to you earlier, they're so much bigger. I like, know, they grew fast, didn't they? They're fast. I've been, wa I've been watching on the, on the gram, all of the, the Instagram live updates and things. I'm like, yes, give me one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's, uh, it's, between, it's between him with these, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I He's love Oh no, he's camera yep. shy. He doesn't listen. Okay, don't it's put him okay. up. It's okay. Not all, not not all babies she need to be camera kids. Let them navigate to their own interests. Some are more interested in playing fetch and doing sport like things. Come on. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like okay. That. And then other ones know they have a consciousness of the camera and they know how to turn it on and they know their angles. So you just know. like let the puppies show themselves. They will let you know what they're interested in, and then you just follow their dreams. I believe in that, and I love that. That's the wave of the future. Charles, how long has this been going on, man, with the puppies? What's, what's, what is, what? <laughs> I love the way he posed this question. How long has this been going on with the puppies? Tell me. Like, it's a problem so that he's been dealing with. Like the universe knows, uh, and like you were saying, God, universe, whatever you need it to be. Mm -hmm. Literally, uh, uh, we were in the show, um, and we ended up closing early because of all this, right? We closed March, I think, 13th was our last day. 
I went into uh, Oh, I saw it. I saw the I watched it on um yeah. on the streaming, man. Congratulations. I Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, so we 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 ended and mm -hmm. then like what would you say, Carmen? Like a, a week later, maybe that weekend, she went into to labor. Oh, did you get on the yeah. Oh no, 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 definitely not because that was a few weeks later, because they're three weeks old now. But like to be able to be home and be with the dog, you know, with with Chai as she was going into labor and like having the availability to be here with these puppies, because they the puppies, man, they take a lot of work. They take a lot of yeah. work. every couple of hours they're waking up yeah. and now they're getting to the place where Chai doesn't, you know, she's over it now. She's like, okay, I've been a mom for, <laughs> for two weeks. Stop sitting <laughs> on me. Your teeth are coming in. Uh, so like now it's like, and they're walking around too. We 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 bring them out. Uh, I'm out here on the sun porch. Uh, we bring them. We bring them out here on the on the sun porch, uh, so they can like hang out and like just you know walk around as freely as they want. You know, uh, so it's just it's been cool, man. And that's what I've been doing. I think, I think the animals are joining the call right now because on cue my cat has come out here. So that's you guys. What. I, listen, let me explain something to both of y'all. I, listen, I, I love to see it. And also, I don't, oh my God, I don't need this. I don't have any animals. Small mammals. That's what we've been doing. Charles and I both have just been caring for small mammals. You might hear some of my oh. other small mammals. Here, One of them's yelling my, mommy right now. Here's my baby. This is my baby currently. I, oh, well, you're doing a good job. So... How does it have so many flowers on it? Oh, listen, do you want to know the tea? Okay, check it out. Yeah. So when I got this, there were like, I think maybe like five of these have like bloomed. And you see like this little guy, he's holding out on me right now. I'm going to get the bloom, don't worry, but he's holding out. But I just have been like watering and like alternating because I don't really know what plants need. Um, <laughs> well, you clearly you're doing okay. Look at that one. I've been Jeez. like alternating between direct and indirect sunlight because that's the best I can do. Oh, and, uh, it's been like yeah. Look at this. Look at her. Oh, that's so this, this my baby. This my it's, a, it's putting on a big show that one with all those flowers. Dang. I know. I'm so like it almost that. doesn't look real. I only kill orchids, so I can't believe that you actually have a plant that looks like that. I, one time I, I had somebody. On it. I have somebody that may or may not see this video that worked with me in a previous environment and I started to kill the orchid and they told me that I could add vodka water to it to bring Ooh. it back to life, which now I very much do not believe is true. And I think it only furthered the death of that plant. So <laughs> your DK space right now is like, no, that's mm -hmm. cute, but no. Yeah. yeah. So after that moment, that was so like plant care triggering for me. I just believe that I can't take care of orchids. Like they're too but fickle. But you can keep a cat alive. And I can keep a cat alive. Impressive. And two small humans that will only need relative amounts of therapy in the future because of the There therapy. it is. So, you know. There it is. Small victories. Cat and humans. I've just got in one orchid. That's it. You're killing it at the orchid, though. It's a lot of responsibility, you guys. I'm tired. I don't get any sleep. It's like... Okay, can I, can I give you the one quote from my house this week? Yes. The one quote from my house this week was, is breakfast ready? I have a 9.30 call. <sighs> Who said it? An adult or a child? <laughs> this feels, okay, so I want to say an adult, but it feels like it was probably a child. You'd be wrong. The person that said that's 10. So yeah. that's how we're doing. <laughs> Is breakfast ready? I have a 930 call. Okay, well. He knows what he needs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's like uh, being a little, I don't know what goes on in that room. I hear gaggles <laughs> of fifth graders talking to each other through a screen, and I hope it's educational. I, um. I don't know. It's yeah. Hope just keep hoping on that. I don't it'll know. Be, it'll work out. <laughs> he comes out to use the bathroom and ask for food. So you know it's good enough. Good enough. <clears throat> okay. So that's how we're doing. Right. Oh man. Okay. So DK. Yeah. So Charles and I organized a little bit before we talked to you. Oh, okay. I love that. And we decided, and we decided that because you're our guest, you're gonna get our fast and dirty twenty questions. Which I don't, you know, oh, I think, I think I, I have a question generator, but I don't think Charles likes my question generator because I think he, I think he thinks they, they're too deep. They run the risk. Oh, okay. But well, we, but we want to, we want to mix. You. you guys could do a what good mix. You could do a mix, like some light, like basic questions and then like deep, 
You know what I'm saying? I also have a question for Charles, but I'll ask it later. I'm just curious about who's the the father of those puppies. But you know, who's the who's the dog? Well, well uh, maybe we should do maybe we should do who is the father. We should do that that talk show moment of who is the father of those who? puppies. Is the who puppy is the puppy daddy? <laughs> Maury would be nice, uh, you know, right now. Uh, but no, it's savage. It's this little. It's this little. Toy poodle. He's a white toy poodle. Uh, you know, it's very, very. He's a gentleman. Uh, Wait, I don't. I don't think I knew that he was a toy poodle. Yeah. He's little. Yeah. So how he's big are the savvy. puppies gonna get? Yeah, yeah about chai size, a little bit smaller. Okay. okay. That's cute. Yeah. That's cute. cute. All right. Thank you for indulging me. Okay, let's get to the question. Wait a minute, real, real quick. Carmen, okay, sure. Carmen, yeah. what's up? Uh, Hi, Carmen. Hey. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to understand what's happening because for a full second after, even though I know what we're talking about, I thought it was a stuffed animal. So, <laughs> is, is does it have a mohawk? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Oh. I like, how, I like how I got closer to my camera as if that would help me see it better. I know, me too. I was like... <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, whoa. No. <laughs> let's, look, let's look closer at the dog. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I think, I think, okay, I, I'm with Chai. That dog is fashionable. That dog is, that dog would take me only to cool clubs and restaurants. So I would, I would let that happen. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. PK. Mm -hmm. Charles, do you want to start? Do I? Welcome. Welcome to 20 questions. I'm going to ask the first question. And I, here you go. From, being from Chicago, uh, I hope you can appreciate this. Um, Vintner, Hot Crunchy Curls, or Flame the Hots? Vintner, Hot Crunchy Curls. Don't play with me like that. Okay. There's no other answer. Why? What would you say? I'm curious. I want to know. I'm from Chicago. There's no other, an there's no other answer. There you go. All right then. And done. Okay, my question. DK, uh -huh. uh -huh. what restaurant do you eat at most? Oh, what restaurant do I eat at most? Okay, here's the issue. Okay, is I'm, I, so having come from the service industry world, I am, uh, I'm bougie. So, <laughs> um, so I would have to say... <laughs> Charles. I, it's true. I'd be like, I'd be like, what y'all got going on over here? Um, did I eat at the most? Honestly, I like, I, here's the thing, like, I'm a Libra, and I don't really like to make choices like that, so I just like to, like, get a variety of experiences, because I got curiosity around them all, um, but I think if I had to judge by the last year, I would probably say DMK Burger Bar was probably the place that I frequented the most, because they got boozy burgers. What's your middle name? What's my middle name? Middle initial. I'm I'm hoping it's not an M. Yeah. Oh no, my so my middle name is Kyrie. Actually, it's the K. Ah, okay. I was about to say because if you're if you if you're like Daniel DMK. Kyrie, I will go in on you. Uh, well, on so it's funny because on social media I'm Daniel Kyrie Madison, which is like almost that, but like not that. Okay. I'm, there you go. Question, man. Okay. When we're when we are back from quarantine, what is the first trash food takeout space you're going to? Oh, bro. Um, listen, judge me, don't judge me. I don't care. Okay, I'm rolling up in Popeyes. I'm getting the two piece and a biscuit. Okay, and I'm adding extra sides. I don't care because I'm a player like that. Do you understand? I roll in and I go, "What size do you have? I'll take all of them." That's me. I gotta, I gotta add one follow up to that. Do you put honey on the biscuit? I will put honey on the biscuit. I put honey on the chicken. Okay. I put honey and hot sauce on the chicken and honey on the biscuit. Do you understand? I like to mix it up. Okay. I'm different like that. <laughs> okay. I got one. <laughs> there was too much okay, vodka in that last one. Go I ahead. love that. It's vodka fueled question and answer. See, this is why we chat first and we let your drink of choice take hold. Now right. there's questions, right? Let it it's marinate. all part of our master plan. Yeah. Um, what what is something obscure that you're really into or were really into? 
something obscure. Obscure. Um, this isn't exactly, this isn't exactly obscure, um, but I love young adult fiction. And as much as I love young adult fiction, I am equally embarrassed by the fact that I love young adult fiction. So I frequently get hardcover copies of young adult fiction and I take the jacket off of the book so that you don't see the cover of the young adult fiction so that when I'm in a professional setting, like on set slash at work, you might ask me questions and I'll keep my answer vague, you see. So you, so you look like a pseudo intellectual that reads like actual paper books which happen to be young adult fictions that nobody they, actually realizes. They happen, if it's, listen, if, it, if it's not a collection of essays, okay, because he's got layers, um, <laughs> it's young adult fiction. So <laughs> the, um, the most recent series that like, I'm like head over heels for, and I think like, even if you're not like a young adult fiction person, like this shit is like so lit. It's um, the Children of Blood and Bone series. Um, which is about like Orisha and it's about like Africa and it's it almost entirely, no, it is entirely populated by African people and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And I think they're making it into like a movie franchise. So get on that right now. Okay, like that. noted. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the book again? I think it's Children of Blood and Bone. Listen, um, y'all can still hear me, right? I'm not gonna go far because- I can hear you. My books are all over the place, but it's, it's, I believe her name is pronounced Tomi Adeyemi. Mm. And it's, uh, this one is called Children of, of Virtue and Vengeance, but like the series itself is Children of Blood and Bone. Um, but yeah, the covers like be looking like this or whatever. You see what I'm saying? And like, it's on that representation tip that I love so much. And it's good. It's really good. So that, like that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> hey, I like that. I, look, I'm I'm recommending that to a couple of people. Um, one person, probably my sister, um, and, and I say that because my sister is in a, like a huge Harry Potter fan. So, for my sister, ask, uh, what house do you belong to? Oh, I'm, oh listen, listen, said, listen. Uh oh, uh oh. Listen, let me explain something to y'all right now. Okay, <laughs> I take this. I take this very, very seriously. All right, in a, in, a, in a setting where I, where, where I, I might be given the opportunity to introduce myself, I might say something like, "Hi, my name is Daniel Kyrie. I belong to House Slytherin. I'm also known as the Mother of Dragons. Okay, first of his kind. Okay, a uh, 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 person of the Andals and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll go on and on. But I am House Slytherin. Okay." And I feel like it's like this, okay? I'm like, I'm like a Slytherin son, okay? With like a Ravenclaw rising and like a Hufflepuff moon. It's like that. <laughs> I love the distinction there. Oh my gosh. I get nervous with Slytherin. I get nervous. Slytherin you makes should. me nervous. <laughs> I'm Hufflepuff. I'm Hufflepuff. You're Hufflepuff? Yeah. Uh, that's so yeah, cute. see, uh, right? So that's... That's the kind of response a Slytherin would have about someone like me. It's like, oh, like, right? Like, I'm like, right? oh, that's so sweet. Aww, that's I love it. Oh, oh. Charles, what are you're you? Not are you me, what Hufflepuff, house so that's you, really cute. What house does Charles belong to? Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Yeah. Huh. I would have, I would have, I would have, I would have, I think I would have pegged you for Ravenclaw, but Gryffindor makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Why, 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 I, I need to know that. Why, why Ravenclaw? Um, well, since I met you, uh, which I met you a long time ago now, actually, I met you, I think it was maybe the year after I left, uh, After School Matters, uh, Gallery AAP, or yeah. I think it was called then, but, um, no, but since I met you, I just had, like, this unshakable impression of you as just, like, like a fierce intellect. And it's it's held like this entire time that I've known you. I just think that you're that. you're very um, specific, and that strikes me as like Ravenclaw. Mm. So that like that like that's why. I've never thought about that. Okay. Yeah, I agree with but that. I, but I but I, I can see but that. I also think that your attack yeah your your attack on the thing how you sort of implement the wit and the and the intellect might operate in the way of a Gryffindor. So you, yeah, so I see that too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Listen, I asked that question so I can get a little bit more specific into my house. So I appreciate it. Okay. 
There you go. He, made, he, he, he posed a question to you that was really about him so that, you know, we could, figure, we could just map this out together in real time. The whole time he's like, now ask me, ask me. Ask me back. You got to ask me back now because social graces. Um, uh, okay, here's my question. What are some small pleasures that make you way happier than they should? Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think the fact that I only have one of my ears pierced makes me far happier than it, I think it ever should make anyone happier. It's the left one. And it's like this, it's asymmetrical and I'm here for the asymmetry of it all. What else? Um, the fact that I can do this to my ear makes me really happy. Oh, um, that's worth being happy about. I know. It's different. I like, I like it. it. It's part of who I am. What else? Do, what else? Um, it's falling apart. Oh, do you know that thing that you used to do when you were a kid and you would like put like Elmer's glue on your hand and then like as it dried you would peel it off? Mm -hmm. That kind of shit. Like peel off masks. I think like I found Those it. Those cucumber way, melon like, stretchy ones? Huh? Those cucumber melon stretchy ones? Like that kind of stuff that's like. When you put it on, it's like a and paste. And it's sticky. And it dries and then you peel mm -hmm. it off. Like that kind of thing brings me far more joy than I feel like it should. Those are so, those are simple joys. I like that. Yeah, Let's I like that. Joy. Uh, which season do you enjoy best? Like, what's your season? Fall, autumn. That's my favorite time. It's my. It's just. It's my favorite time of year. It's also. It's when I was born. So that's very um, narcissistic of me. But also, like, I feel like temperatures are perfect. Like speaking just like as a Chicago boy, like I feel like um, there isn't much of a spring for real, but like you get a, you get a good fall, here. you get a good, you know, and it, it transitions from being way too damn hot and fashion that doesn't make sense to me. And it goes to layers, you know, it transitions to layers and nice like muted colors, earth tones, and that's my shit. So fall. <laughs> Um, it, what skill or craft would you like to master? What, what thing would you like to have a level of mastery that you don't currently have mastery at? I'm torn between making this like fun or like real. Um, I think. <laughs> Go with your gut. Go with your vodka. I think, I think, you know, I think music. Um, I think like I've grown okay, wait, up. I'm going to stop you. I'm sorry. I want to hear your answer, but I'm going to stop you. Because do you remember, do you remember when I fangirled you, like, in human form? Do you remember this at all? Like, yeah. <laughs> it was after, it was after um, Studio B. Oh, rolled. yeah. Okay, so I need to paint, I need to paint a brief picture for okay. people that are listening. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna yes what you're saying, because it's relative, <laughs> but I also want to say that, like, you knocked me away with, the, okay. We're at we're at Beale Street premiere. Yeah. And Kiki's there. And we're yeah. all there to like yay Kiki. But then I see DK and it's just on the tails of having watched Studio B. And I cut across the theater. I was like, what the hell? I didn't know that you could sing. How did I not I know remember. that? You could sing? Because when I watched it, I was like, what is happening right now with his voice? Like I didn't I hadn't watched you live. I didn't know any of this. So literally Studio B was what opened up like my understanding of your voice and I got mad at you. Like I liked it so much <laughs> I got mad. So I was like, what is this? Like, I was like aggressive at the theater with you. And I think you're like, well, thank you. <laughs> like a little bit like, what do I do with that? So I'm going to let you answer your question, but I'm going to say, I have a feeling that you already have a certain level of mastery that is surprising to me at least, because I had no idea what your voice sounded like. And I was like, <sighs> like when I heard you. So anyway, okay, go on with your actual answer now. Hey, you know what? Thank you so much. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. For real, real talk. I do remember that moment, and I remember being like, what the hell? Thank you. Like, I was really feeling myself after. Of course, because that's a valid response when a special <laughs> human assaults you at not I think, a thing that is your movie. Yeah, I think that, I think that, I think I can sing. Like, I'm, I'm under no delusions that, like, I can't. Like, I, I know that I can't. I think for me, it's like, it's a confidence thing, perhaps, that I... I'm hoping that with, I don't know, cause like I've never had like voice lessons or anything like that. And I've just started this week actually. So I'm very excited about that. 
But um, I just, I want to be better. I want to be like, I want to be, because here's the, here's the real tea. You know, I can hear something and I can like kind of figure it out. And after repetition, I can like nail it. But like people be talking about, you know, key changes. They be throwing out letters and stuff and calling it sharks and flats. And I'd be like, nodding and smiling. You see what I'm saying? So like that's the side of it. It's more, I think, the musical theory, the music theory side of things that I wish that I had a better grasp on. So that's a skill set that I want to work on and improve. And also like, even like you coming up to me, like, I didn't know you could sing. Like, there's a reason for that. Okay, because I don't have, I don't have like confidence, enough confidence around it where like, I think I've turned down pretty much every musical audition I've ever received. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, and I, think, I think that's. I think to your point. I think that's hard though, because when you, if you, if you are, if you excel at your task, then what they're going to do is they're going to hand you the score to a show and be like, "Go learn," right? Like, which is fair. Like, I, like I, I clap you for like saying yes to the. Uh, did you say? Vocal I'm sorry, did you say? Did you say I clap you? I clap you. I clap you. I'm, Yay! I, I love. <laughs> I clap you. I love it. I clap you. Yes. I clap I'm you. <laughs> I clap you right now for saying yes to the vocal lessons. But I mean, like, because I think it's like, if you can, if you can grow in the mastery of the thing that gives you anxiety, then you can fully accept the excellence that you could already like tap into. If you felt like you had the full scope of skills at your access, which for you is probably just like a yes and to learning sheet music, right? You know, like, yeah. Cause I, yeah, yeah, I just, I'm at, I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't know what I don't know. And it's like, for, for me, it's not, for me, it's not enough to be like good at something, you know? It's like, I, wa- I just, I want to, I want to freaking, I just want to know it. I want to know it so well that it's like, I'm in the room and I, and like somebody plays something. I'm like, actually, can you put it in my key, darling? It's this, do you know? And I can't do it. I can't. It's like at the Tonys. So basically, you want to be a better cabaret year. singer, is what you want. Like, you said what? I said, so basically, you want to be a better cabaret singer. Like, you want to like yes, and, like, I want have to your cabaret. And but yeah. no, but also it's like I, I think it was. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna blank on his name, and it's literally only because I'm tipsy. It's not because I'm a hooligan. But oh, <laughs> Billy Porter. I don't know. Yeah. You guys saw that clip where Billy Porter's like at the Tonys, and they're like, and like whoever is hosting, I think it was James Corden or something. He like goes up. He's like, sing this thing. It's like in this book, and like he starts singing, and then he's like, oh child, that's too high. Put it here, and like does the thing, and then like sings it, and everybody's applauding, and blah blah blah. See me, okay, in that situation as I am today, okay, James Corden would have come up and he would have said, sing this thing, and I would be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And I want to be the I want to be the person that's like the show is going on, and it's because of me. And I'm doing a lot, you guys. I've had a lot of vodka. I'm gonna stop sipping now. Um, next question, Charles, you're up. <laughs> we we have no space for apology. No no, no time <laughs> for regrets, man. You 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 drink that vodka and you <laughs> okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna go. No, not you. what you do, Charles. <laughs> Say what? I said, you know not what you do. <laughs> Later. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you one last question, okay? Okay. Um, you just gave some amazing determination, shared some amazing determination for yourself, right? Of something that, that could be trivial, right? Like being a, a, a cabaret singer, but like knowing that you conquer that fear one and then also two doing something about it right like you are you're getting voice lessons to conquer that fear so you can do what you want to do um what would you recommend for everybody that's that's watching this everybody that will watch this how do they get that confidence how do they get that assuredness and how do they identify what they want to do this is huge my bad this is a real big i started and i'm like whoa 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 uh, uh, get that confidence, figure out what it is, and then get that, that follow through to get it done. Cause you got all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, it's a few, it's a few things that I have learned and am still learning. Okay. Uh, 
I think one of the, I think it's about, first of all, humble yourself. Um, this is a, this is a word for me. <laughs> Do you understand? It's a word for me because there's a certain amount, especially depending on who you are slash how you move through the world. Um, there's a certain amount of like, uh, uh, I don't know, bravado or a certain amount of like what I will loosely call an arrogance. That is like, it's kind of a thing that you put up that sometimes you have to erect in order to go day and day, day and day out into these audition rooms. It's, it's, a, it's the thick skin. It's the thing that says like, whatever, like it'll roll off and like whatever. It's a, it's a version of fake it till you make it too, I think, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely, totally, right? Yeah. And it's something that I have employed so often in order to protect myself or to make myself feel safe. In, in any room that I'm in. Because when I feel safe in a room that I'm in, that's when I can be vulnerable. That's when I can do my best work. And so there's a level of putting a thing up to make that happen. Put that up as you need it. And also have a real conversation with yourself and humble yourself. Because what the humility does is it, it, it enables you to understand that there is no possible goddamn way that you as an individual, that I as an individual can know everything there is to know. It's okay to say I don't know. And furthermore, this leads into the second thing, it's okay to be curious. And I think that you need to foster the curiosity, okay? You need to nurture that curiosity. You need to allow the curiosity to take up more space than overconfidence or doubt or anything else, right? So the first step is humble thyself. The next is curiosity. And when you find that curiosity, when you really get to a place where the work um, is about being curious and asking questions and admitting what it is that you don't know, and then putting in the work to find out the thing, to solve the thing, to examine the thing so that you have a better understanding of it, right? So mm -hmm. humility, <clears throat> excuse me, humility, curiosity, and then the work. You cannot be afraid to do the work. You cannot be afraid to do the work. You cannot be afraid to do the work. Do the work. Do the work, do the work, okay? Do the work. I, I can say it with many different inflections because I've done some work, but no. <laughs> do the work. You have to do the work and you have to find a way to fall in love with the work because it's hard and it's not easy and it makes you look at yourself in different light and in different ways that you don't want to look at yourself, that you don't want to engage yourself and like that kind of uh, a viewpoint of you, but you have to, because that's the work. That's what involves, uh, that's what the work is involved in. So yeah, like that, humility, curiosity, and work. And I think the work part sometimes is where people get into that self-saboteur status, where they stop short of the work, because mm -hmm. if they don't apply themselves to the work, then they don't know if they were going to be like rejected from the thing that they want to apply themselves to. Like, I've yeah. noticed sometimes that like you stop short of the work because if you didn't go full on, then you have a reason why it didn't work out because I didn't really blah, blah, blah. Totally. You know what totally. I mean? And to, and to make it even more personal than it just not working out, I think, I think a lot of us, we get to the work and then we stop short of the work because it's like, what if we do the work and then find out? You know, or someone then tells us, or it's, it's the thing of like, I put all of this work and effort in, and then someone along the way tells me that, hey, you're still not doing it right. Or whatever that like fear is, or that thing looks like, that's the real fear that stops us from doing the work. But when I say do the work, it's do the work in spite of that. It's do the work anyway. Yeah. It's yeah. do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because all that will do is it'll, it'll teach you. you. You can't, when you engage, uh, in the work and that way, you circumvent the fear of failure, okay? And you have a recognition that failure is a part of the process and it's a part of the work. I have failed in ways, I think publicly, <laughs> that other people may not even view as failure, but to me, I walk off of the stage or I walk up, the fir my fucking first performance at, at Steppenwolf, I like threw up backstage, rinsed my mouth out as quickly as I could and then walked on as the lights were coming up. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, for me, that's, that was a failure. 
for everyone, for anyone else watching, it may not have been, but for me, it was. And so that was like a moment for me where it's like, you can't be, a, you cannot be afraid to fail because the, the, the truth about like life and how it operates and works is that that failure is inevitable. And actually it's a part of your process. Mm -hmm. And that's been like, that's a thing that's been so hard to learn and internalize to the point where I'm, st I find myself, even though I've learned this lesson, I'm still learning this lesson. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, yeah, it's just that. You have to learn to love the work. You have to learn to love the work. I love that. I love that. Listen, I, I, I wish oh. I would have caught the, the front end of that, that answer because what I did catch was just absolutely amazing. And it was absolutely amazing to kick in and catch it up with you, um, you know, DK. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad that the, you know, the stay at home order doesn't have you down uh, and that you are still finding ways to create, be positive uh, and, and do the work. Um, let's raise, I don't know if you have any more vodka. Oh, <clears throat> one second, please. Just give me one. I got a little more. Oh. <laughs> Boom. Raise a glass. Cheers to good people and good conversation. Uh, take care of yourself, man. And uh, everybody else out there, we will see you next week at 5 o'clock uh, for the same different guests, but same uh, cocktail and conversation. Yes, next week. We'll see you. Yeah. Hey, guys, if I can, if I may, thank you so much for having me on. This oh has been gosh, so thank wonderful. You for doing this. Thank you. <laughs> this has I'm been so, so wonderful. Could. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, I had a very busy, busy, busy schedule, but I, I, know. I love you, you guys had to enough. Clear where, a know, lot of I things said, and move. I said no to everything else. You understand? And I said it's about us right now. No. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, to everyone watching, be well. Take care of yourself how you need to and then take care of others if you can. Cheers. That's beautiful. Cheers. All right. I will see many of you. We'll see you back next week. DK, I hope I see you soon. I hope we get a chance to drop in and chat some more. I, I hope love so you. too. That's so love good you guys. See. Take care. Right. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.